Hello folks, it is January 17th, 2021, it is Sunday, we're postponing Yanny plays till tomorrow, because it's for a good occasion, but um, all seriousness, we gotta talk about uh, lawless New York City again, and of course, um, a lot of disturbing things that are, are happening again in... Big Apple, just a lot of craziness, a lot of insanity, and, you know, I don't even want to go on the New York one, because it's just crazy, but, um, there is some interesting news we need to lead off with, and that is, um, an update on what happened almost two weeks ago at the Queen Center Mall, um, if you don't remember, there was a, um, a bomb hoax, there was a vehicle, a Tesla, that was in the parking garage of Queen's Place, not Queen Center Mall. The suspect turned himself in almost two weeks ago, so let's um, read this. So he turned himself in back um, on Tuesday morning, January 5th. Lewis Schechner, age 22, called 911 and turned himself into a Brooklyn precinct on Tuesday, January 5th, around 3 a.m. Schechner, whose last known address was in Amherst, Massachusetts, has yet to be charged in the bomb hoax, which was met with the bomb squad and caused an evacuation of the Queen's Place Mall, not the Queen's Center Mall. So, there was an alleged black Tesla Model S stolen. It was reported at 7.30 a.m. back on Monday, January 4th, two weeks ago. The vehicle was spotted with protruding wires inside the Elmhurst Mall parking lot. Investigators then found the suspicious vehicle. The NYPD sealed off several blocks. So, we don't really want to um, recap the whole thing. So, um, there was a dog rescued. It was a husky dog. We don't really want to get into that. Mm. So, there was a disturbing uh, video on Instagram hinting a suspect, so we're not going to read that. Speaking of the Queen Center Mall, we have a robbery reported. Let's get into this. So this happened right before the new year. So the suspect stole $100,000 worth of jewelry from a jewelry shop in Queen Center Mall. The incident happened at December 28th at 10.15 a.m. An unidentified man broke into the closed sale jewelry store located at 90-15 Queens Boulevard. With no one inside, the man removed approximately $100,000 worth of items from the store and fled on foot in an unknown direction. Police described the male suspect as being... 20 and 30 years old. So, uh, officers on the 110 precinct have surveillance footage of the suspect from camera near the store. So, let's say this could be the parking garage. Of course, no arrests have been made. The investigation is ongoing. Anybody who has crime tips can call 800 577 tips in Espanol 888 which is pista. Public can also submit their tips by walking on the Crime Stoppers and NYPDCrimestoppers.com or on Twitter at NYPD Tips. So, yep, robbery reported at Queen Center Mall a week before the, the, the fake bomb incident. All right, so let's get into what happened on the BX 36. Um, back on Thursday morning. We hours of Thursday morning going into Friday. Um, there was an incident involving the BX-36 bus. An accordion style bus. As you can see here on your screen right now. The bus was hanging over University Place in the Cross Blocks Expressway. We do know the bus was heading towards the George Washington Bridge Bus Depot in Washington Heights. The driver has come forward claiming that he does not do drugs. Okay, so the identity of the bus driver is Everton Bacon. 
55 years old. So he backed up his claim with paperwork from St. Barnabas Hospital, indicating his urine specimen was received at 10.33 a.m. on Friday after 11 hours after the crash. So, obviously, we want to go into details about what happened. Okay, here we go. So this is the story. This is what I want to read. This is it right here. Let's see. So they're saying the bus was going at a dangerous speed of 17 to 26 miles per hour while making a left turn that caused a speed for less than 5 miles an hour. Um, Pat Warren, MTH chief safety officer, said that they do have a black box tape and they're using GPS in the investigation. Um, transit advocates are calling for the uh, National Transportation Safety Board to be involved as this incident did technically take place on an interstate highway. So there is a chance they might get involved here. So... Yes, okay. Let's see if this is the more specific article. I want to go into the more specific article. Here it is. Okay. Nine reported hurt when the crash sends bus dangling over the Cross Bus Expressway. Nine people were taken to hospitals late Thursday when a tandem MTA bus feared over an overpass in the Bronx towards the Cross Bus Expressway Authority set. Shocking photographs and video posted to Twitter showed the blue articulated bus suspended over the expressway from an overpass on University Avenue just east of the Major Deegan Expressway and the Harlem River. So I was taking a look at traffic cameras when this first happened and I noticed that the cross box didn't have any issues. So this is a separate overpass from what I made out. The crash happened just before 11.10 p.m. Um, at this particular time, we do not know what caused the bus to lose control. So they did shut down the New Jersey-bound lanes of the Cross Bronx Expressway, which is, of course, one of the most busiest in the United States, of course. So, six people were slightly hurt. Two suffered serious but non-life-threatening injuries, and one person was hurt critically, said a fire department spokesperson. All were taken to area hospitals, the FDNY said. So, yep. Now we're going to get to something even crazier than a bus hanging over the Cross Bronx Expressway. So, this happened at the Central Park 1 Temp Street Station. A naked man, yes, you heard me correctly, naked man was pushed onto the subway track in the third rail. All right? Do you know how disturbing this is? And by the way, um, if you follow me on Twitter, at Andy's Randomness, Progressive Action tweeted a video of um, the aftermath of what happened. So I'm not going to show the video on here because it's disturbing. So again, I would suggest to just try to read this Daily News article for yourself. Um, I'll link it in the description below. That way um, you can see it. I'll just, this will probably be only in the description below, this link, because you can watch the video yourself. So... This happened in Harlem back on Saturday, January 16th. A naked, emotionally wrought man was electrocuted on a subway third rail after he shoved the man onto the tracks and jumped down himself to prevent the man from being rescued. The man who shoved to the tracks and a good smeared and tried to rescue were saved. Around 4 p.m., the crazed man completely unclothed despite the January chill, appeared on the platform at the Central Park North 110 Street Station and began parading and dancing next to the random people, said a witness who made a video of the incident. He came up to dance on me, but I told him to get lost, said the witness, who said he'd seen a naked man at the station before and he had believed to be homeless. Next, the naked man fought another person on the platform and began dancing next to him. Yeah, so, butt naked, of course. The man felt disrespected, so he squatted up like he was going to fight the naked man, said the witness. When he, the naked man, said he wanted to fight, he said he started hitting him like crazy. A train approached the station. 
The man just lost his balance and the naked man was able to push him into the train to the witness. He fell in a way that knocked him temporarily unconscious. And then thankfully the train did stop in the nick of time. It says it, uh, says it right here. See? When another strap hanger jumped down to the tracks to save the shoving victim, the naked man jumped down to the tracks after him. The naked man scuffled with the rescuers of the witnesses. The good Samaritan, angry at having his rescue efforts interrupted, just whacked the hell out of the new man, said the witness. It was a heavy punch. That's when the naked man fell. The naked man hit his shoulder against the third rail, said the second witness. The third rail carries 625 volts of electricity, more than enough to kill anyone instantly. I don't even want to think about it. He didn't die with any pain, though. He died immediately, and the shock was just too much. Police did confirm the incident along with progressive action and said no one involved was charged. So, trust me, if progressive action's confirming this, then you know this is legitimate. Jamel Thompson would not let information like this not be true. Alright, so, thanks to the Daily News and thanks to Jamel Thompson for covering this, of course. Crime in Staten Island, sadly to report, happened on Saturday night. Yep, the 16th. Someone armed with a rifle at around 7.45 p.m. at 9.37 Van Derger Street in Gram Grimes Hill, said the cops. The authorities believe that this home is addressed to Demolo Studios, a music recording studio house in a wood frame building. The gunman was at the door, fired a bullet into the man's back, police said. The victim was rushed to an area hospital to be treated for a life-threatening injury. This is Staten Island. They probably took from Staten Island University Hospital, most likely. The age was not given, of course, of the victim. Detectives canvassed the neighborhood for information late Saturday night. Demolo says on its webpage there's a recording site for hip-hop artists Snoop, Begalow, and Bro God. It rents out its services. So now we're going to move on to this sad story. Let me just close out the stories that I read so that way I don't get confused. Here we go. I have to sadly report that another disturbing incident happened at Krakonum Park. Now, no, this is not the fake doll hoax that we all remember. This was actually a real incident. So, woman was found unresponsive with a bag over her head inside of a Krakonum Park building. Died back on... Friday, January 8th. Okay, we want to confirm the date. According to police sources, the body of a 50-year-old female was found inside at 214-4134 Avenue, while Patch identified as the park's comfort station. No! This is literally where the restrooms are. That's just disturbing. At around 4 p.m. on Friday, January 8th, cops from the 111 precinct reportedly found the woman sitting on the ground with her back against a shipping container. EMS personnel arrive at the scene and pronounce the woman dead, but her cause of death is still under investigation by the coroner's office. So the woman's identity has not been released. So. Obviously, my thoughts and prayers are with um, the woman's family and friends, of course. And uh, everybody in the Bayside community. I mean, this is just awful to hear. And, and I will mention, no other media outlet covered this. You know, I guess New York One doesn't care about Queens again. Why aren't I surprised about this? But at least the media did cover this. There was a suspicious incident reported in Queens Village, so... A lot of scary things are happening in Queens Village lately. Police arrest man suspect of fatally stabbing his father, poisoning three other family members in Queens Village. Police arrested an emotionally disturbed 30-year-old male who was believed to be have stabbed his father to death and possibly poisoned three other members of his family early Thursday morning in Queens Village. Initial reports from the fire department sources indicated the emergency call which came in at around 6.30 a.m. back on Thursday, January 14, 2021, 
and an apartment building at 221-15 Hempstead Avenue with a possible chemical suicide. Officers from the 105th Precinct initially responded to the location after receiving a 911 call about an emotionally disturbed person. Upon arriving at the scene, police reported that they observed Jamie Walker, who believed to be the subject of the call, acting erratically in the hallway. Walker told officers that he had hurt somebody inside the apartment, according to the NYPD. Shortly after entering the home, police said the officers found Law Meadows Walker, age 72, who believed to be a suspect's father, unconscious with multiple stab wounds laying on the floor of the apartment bedroom. Responding EMS units pronounced him dead at the scene. Meanwhile, law enforcement officers said officers found three people, a 70-year-old woman believed to be Walker's mother, a 31-year-old man believed to be his brother, and a 29-year-old woman believed to be the brother's wife, unconscious, unresponsive, laying on a mattress inside the living room. EMS units brought them more to Long Island Jewish Medical Center in New High Park in critical condition. The nature of the injuries is unknown at this time, law enforcement sources said. Walker was taken into custody on Thursday morning back on January 14th and was being evaluated at a nearby hospital, according to authorities. Police have not yet released the name of the injured family members. The fire department determined that there were not high levels of carbon monoxide inside the residence. Additionally, the NYPD Emergency Response Unit conducted a test of the air and found no irregularities, according to the police. Prior to Thursday morning's incident, there have been no 911 calls made about any domestic violence or emotionally disturbed people. And this investigation is being conducted by the 105 Precinct Detective Squad. Alright, so let's uh, move on to our last couple of stories. Cops seek duo who punched a robbed man in Flushing. The NYPD is looking for a duo who assaulted and robbed the man in Flushing last month. On Wednesday, December 23rd at around 11.30 p.m., two unidentified men approached a 21-year-old male who was standing at the corner of College Point Boulevard and Roosevelt Avenue. Seemingly at random, the two men punched the man in the face and stole $10 from him, cops said. The duo ran eastbound on the Roosevelt Avenue and into a residential building located at 40-05 College Point Boulevard. The 21-year-old male was taken to Elmhurst Hospital in stable condition, with swelling and bruising to his face. No arrests have been made. The investigation is ongoing. Long Island City. Man, I don't know what is going on in Northwest Queens lately. Knife building assailant slashes hotel worker in Long Island City. The NYPD is looking for a man who allegedly cut a hotel worker with a knife in Long Island City back on Sunday, January 10th, 2021. Around 6.15 a.m., a 33-year-old a male hotel worker was in the hotel lobby of La Quita Inn at 37-18 Queens Boulevard when he was approached by an unidentified man loitering in the building. The hotel worker stepped out from behind the reception desk where he was working to hand the man a bottle of water. The man grabbed the water bottle took out a knife, lunging towards the hotel worker. The two began to struggle, and the watering man slashed the hotel worker with the knife, cutting his hands and left ear. Eventually, the hotel worker made it back behind the reception desk and was able to close the door separating the desk from the rest of the lobby. The unidentified man walked out of the hotel and fled in an unknown direction. The hotel worker was transported in a stable condition to New York City Health Hospital's Elmhurst. So sadly, we do have surveillance video of what happened back on January 10th. So here we go. So the whole surveillance video really isn't going to give us uh, a clue about what happens. And, and by the way, let's randomly bring up Trader Joe's is opening in Long Island City. So where are they planning on opening this? Just curious. So open between the spring and summer of this year. Ah, so they're going to open it at 22-43 Jackson Avenue. Interesting. 
And they have one in Regal Park at 90-30 Metropolitan Avenue. So I'm just curious, where is this address? This address sounds familiar to me. Let me just quickly look it up. Oh, I know exactly where this is. They're going to open it right by Court Square. Very interesting. They're going to open a Trader Joe's right by Court Square. Hmm. All right, so let's get into um, fire incidents. You know what? We'll get to that last. Cop seek man groping woman in Flushing train station. The NYPD is looking for a man who allegedly groped a woman in Flushing last month. On Tuesday, December 8th, 2020, at 9.40 p.m., a 23-year-old woman was standing inside a 7 train inside the Flushing Main Street station when she was approached by an unidentified man. The man then grabbed the woman's buttocks and ran out of the train when the doors opened, cops set. The man fled in an unknown direction. Thankfully, the 23-year-old female victim did not report any injuries. That's at least the good news out of this. The suspect is a male described between 20 and 30 years old. There's a quick surveillance video of him. Oh, robbery in Forest Hills reported. Cops seek suspect who broke elderly woman's elbow in Forest Hills robbery. So this happened on Saturday, January 3rd at 5.15 p.m. An 83-year-old woman was walking on the sidewalk in front of 112-01 Queens Boulevard when an unidentified man got out of a dark-colored SUV and approached her. The man then grabbed the woman's purse and threw her to the ground. The man then got back in the car and drove off with the purse, which contained around $50, an ID, credit cards, and an iPhone. EMS personnel took the 83-year-old woman to New York Presbyterian Hospital, Queens Flushing, when she was treated for a broken elbow. The suspect then later to use the woman's stolen credit card at a deli in Manhattan at 187 East 167th Street. So they do have surveillance video and no arrests have been made. So um, they do have surveillance video supposedly of the suspect. So just again, why aren't I surprised this is going on in the Blasio city? And look at this guy. He easily wants to get caught. I mean, look at him just look right into the camera. I mean, that's just creepy as it is. And you know why they're able to track him? Because if he's using a stolen credit card anywhere else, they're going to track it. I mean, that's obvious. So sadly, we have to talk about automobile incidents. So the first one we're going to talk about is in Glen Oaks. A teenager is dead after he allegedly crashed his car into a tree while driving a blue box away from his house in Glen Oaks. Back on January 7th, Delo Moreno was driving a car near the vicinity of 88th Street and 256th Avenue on January. Let me make sure this is. Oh, who wrote this? Okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. This is technically 80th Avenue and 265th Street. Oh, really, Queens Courier, you really need to pre proofread your stuff. All right, so let me read it correctly. Dylan Moreno, 16, was driving a car near the vicinity of 80th Avenue and 265th Street on January 7th around 2.50 p.m. when he lost control of the vehicle and collided with a tree. Police arrived at the scene of the crash to find Moreno ejected from the vehicle, lying in the road unconscious, detective said. EMS personnel took Moreno to Long Island Jewish Medical Center in New High Park when he was pronounced dead. No one else was injured in the vehicle. So. This sad incident. Happened right by Long Island Jewish. Very sad. And then this incident happened on the LIE. You know, nobody even covered this. I mean, this is a big deal. A car fire on the LIE? 
happened right by Maurice Avenue on Thursday, January 7th. Around 3 p.m., the FDNY received reports of a BMW SUV on fire on the LIE near the Maurice Avenue exit. Responding units had the blaze under control less than an hour later, around 3.50 p.m. There is video of it, but uh, that's why this is loading. We do have a picture of it. You know, see that? This is a BMW, right? Yeah, this is a BMW. I can tell by the body. See? Well, here's something that got a lot of media coverage in Brooklyn. And even Loud Labs covered this. So this was a multi-level uh, multi fire. Multi-alarm level fire. So this happened in Brooklyn at 244 Monterose Avenue. So this happened back on January 14th. Okay, so it happened at 6.10 p.m. on the second floor of the building near Bushwick Avenue in East Williamsburg. The fire quickly spread, burning through the third floor and the roof and damaging four adjacent apartment buildings. <sighs> wow, so this is, uh, this is crazy. There was another fire in this area back on December 7th that burned their house about two blocks away. Different family, wow. Very unfortunate that this happened. They're all wooden buildings, and the problem is, in this part of Brooklyn, especially in the northwestern part of Brooklyn, ah, oh, there's a bunch of old buildings in Greenpoint and Williamsburg. Yeah, especially if wood's involved. And then this happened in Flushing about uh, two weeks ago. This happened back on Saturday, January 9th. So this happened at 136-1537th Avenue by Main Street. This happened right before midnight on Friday, January 8th. 200 FDNY personnel and 50 units had to contain this fire. Seven alarms. Crazy. Seven firefighters sustained minor injuries while battling the inferno and have been transported to local hospitals. While a collapse zone was established, units were still operating at the scene at 8 a.m. on Saturday, January 9th. The fire was extinguished just before 9 a.m. They're still investigating this, but just craziness. So lastly, let's take a look at what our friends at New York One are up to lately. Just get an idea of what is going on here. Well, at least New York One covered the, the bus incident in the Bronx. And by the way, the driver is on suspension without pay. So I just want to mention that. Yep, coronavirus. Why aren't I surprised? What else is on the homepage? Yep, all about Biden. And of course, they're going to talk about de Blasio's budget since it's the last one while he's mayor of New York City. Look at this. Transit news. They're not even going to talk about what happened at Central Park. Ridiculous. Right, let me just take a look and see if, um, news. Public safety. Here we go. Right, anything about what happened? Nope. 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 Nothing. All politics. Oh, well, this is notable. I'll read this if I get the chance. Anything else? I just want to see. Oh, here's some good news. They actually shut down the hotel in Kew Gardens I mentioned on New Year's um, New Year's Day. Yeah, and there was a chokehold incident, but you know the media forgot about that one, which I'm not even going to get into. I'm not even going to get into. All right, lastly, let's just take a look at Queens. Anything else? Wow, this is nothing about Queens. Look at this. There's a shooting in Queens last week, so I might as well get into that one. So I'll quickly read that. 
Let's go to this one first. Controversial hotel in Kew Gardens that's been a magnet for violence during the pandemic has shut down for good. So that's good news. So, the, uh, let me make sure it's, uh, they won't even mention the name of the hotel that was involved. Let me just play what, let me play the video. Uh, hang on. I have it right here. Let me just put my uh, channel logo up for a second. I'm uh, just going to pull it up. I don't want you to see my... I uh, don't want you to see my dad's account. That'd be bad. Okay, let's see if I can play it now. Let's see if they even bring up the name of the hotel. Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Despite large signs on its windows that say Hotel Open, the notorious Umbrella Hotel on Queens Boulevard is now closed, with several police officers blocking anyone from getting in. Upset. Lisa Polioni of Kew Gardens was among the two dozen neighborhood activists who came to this rally Saturday outside the hotel. Well, at least they covered us for two minutes. All right, let's get into this one. Shooting in Queens. No video about that. All right, so this happened uh, back on January 8th. A shooting happened at 64th Street near 53rd Drive. Uh, the chief of detectives, Tariff Monahan, said the department received a call at the time of a family member who was hallucinating and destroying the basement. The man had already been hospitalized and released earlier in the day. This is according to Chief of Detectives Tariff Monahan. Uh, the officers arrived and tried to convince the man to go to the hospital. He said one of the man's family members also tried to convince the man to go to the hospital. The man then pulled out a knife and was not going back to the hospital and lunged at the officers. The man is currently in critical condition. Monahan said in addition to the hospitalization earlier in the day, the man was also hospitalized on Wednesday. Ooh, yikes. So they shot and tasered this person. Right, where in Queens is this? Sounds like Regal Park, maybe. Just gonna look it up. Yeah, I think this is Maspeth. Oh, yeah, this is Maspeth. Yep, no surprise. No surprise this is happening in Maspeth. 64th Street near 53rd Drive, right? See if I can pull it up. Oh yeah, happened right around here. A lot of residential houses. I'll just mention that. This is definitely Maspeth. Yep, because 65th place leads right to um, leads right over the Borden Avenue. Yep. Why aren't I surprised this happened in Maspeth? Oh, and look at this. This was a. This should have been a big deal. Woman and child fall from Manhattan building. It's happened in Midtown. Oh, all right, let's read this. It happened on January 10th. It happened in Hell's Kitchen. It happened at 1.45 p.m. Apartment building at West 53rd Street and 10th Avenue. Police said they arrived to find a woman in her 30s and a child between the ages of 4 and 5 lying unconscious. They were both rushed to Mount Sinai West and they were pronounced dead. So anything else in Manhattan that that I'm not aware of right now? I'm just curious. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Oh, this is city pushes for cameras to catch. Ah, that's that's New York. One in a nutshell. All right, folks. So. Uh, we're going to wrap up this news update. I know a lot's going on, and you know I'm going to keep covering it because uh, each day it's just craziness here in New York City. And as long as there's news, I'm going to keep covering it. So with that, thank you for watching, and until the next one, please take care.